Hi, second grade. Welcome back to class with me, your teacher, Miss Emily Leiden. Today we are going to be looking at interesting insects. We are also going to be learning about organic shapes and creative lettering. I am a teaching artist in the PACE program and the apron that I am wearing has an example right away of creative lettering. You might see that it spells P-A-C-E, which is the name of our organization, but if you look closely, you see that there are other shapes involved in this, and it's not like writing. It is like turning letters into something more creative. You can add images inside, you can add images around the letters, or you can make the letters themselves into creative shapes. You have been studying about insects, all the interesting insects and the things that they can do. I like to think about the qualities of the insects kind of like their superpower. They can fly, they can communicate, they can make different sounds, they can listen, they can pick up on things that maybe we don't even know exist in nature. You have been learning about the firefly, the grasshopper, Katie did, crickets, cicada, and beetles, like the ladybug, the boll weevil, the tiger beetle, the wasp beetle. All of these insects are different and have different qualities and different shapes. If we think about different shapes when we do our lettering, let's look closer what an organic shape is. We see insects in nature, right? Organic shapes are defined as having the quality that resembles living things, shapes found in nature. So organic shapes are gonna work really well with our drawing today and our lettering. We are going to be doing creative lettering. Creative is defined as able to design or make something new and original using the imagination rather than imitating something else. So we get to use our imagination today. Everybody wake up your brains. Are they awake? Are they awake? What do I have behind me? You've been learning about this beetle. It is called a ladybug. We are going to practice drawing a ladybug and a firefly. And if you really enjoy insects and you think they're so interesting and cool, you can practice drawing some of the other ones too, like a rhinoceros beetle or the Katie did, or a grasshopper. With creative lettering, artists design letters of the alphabet. They use the letters to create art. They create art to share ideas. Some artists like to draw funny letters. They use their imaginations. And you get to create art with your letters today. We're going to draw them and decorate these letters and I want you to think real quick about some ideas that you may have. Let's jump right in with practicing drawing some of the insects. So you need a piece of white paper and a pencil. If you have a ruler, that is really good for straight lines. And if you have an eraser, that's really good as we practice because you might want to erase a little bit and draw again. After drawing these things, we are going to color them in. So get a box of crayons. I will meet you at the art table. Let's jump right in. All right, second grade. Thank you for joining me at the art table. I hope you have your supplies, which is a piece of white paper and something to draw with and then something to color with. And if you have the bonus supplies of a ruler or an eraser, you'll probably find those helpful too. Let's practice drawing some organic shapes and then we will practice our creative lettering. Organic shapes are having the quality that resembles living things, shapes found in nature, like our insects, but also just random shapes. They usually are curvy and wavy. What are some shapes that you can think of that has a curviness? How about a leaf? Let's try to draw some leaves. I'm going to use a marker, but you can use your pencil. And let's do a curved line and another curved line. 
good. Now we want it to just be more like a shape. We can do a curvy line all the way around. And if we close it by attaching the beginning and the end, closing the shape, then we've got a nice organic shape. Let's draw something that we would see in nature, maybe under the sea. Something that looks a little bit more wavy. Could this be seaweed under the sea? How about one last organic shape of something that looks more like a flower? Good. I want you to get a new piece of paper or you can turn your paper over and I want to practice drawing a ladybug. The ladybug has a circular shape kind of more like an oval. Can you draw an oval on your paper? We're going to draw the top of the ladybug with one half circle giving it a head. Now what are some characteristics of this ladybug that you have learned while you were learning about interesting insects? These beetles have dots. So let's put some dots on our ladybug. Some of the dots may go off the edge. How about all of those? Can you draw all those dots? And the ladybug does have wings. Now the wings are all tucked in right now and we're gonna show the two wings by drawing one line down the middle. Great work. Now how many legs does the ladybug have? The ladybug has six legs. So we can show these legs by going out from the curve and then down a little. And we can make them more thick by outlining those lines a little. Good. Let's do two more on this side. Out and curve. And one more on the bottom. Very interesting looking insect. Let's do three more on the other side. You can kind of imagine a line across so that it's coming out of the same part of the beetle. And imagine going across the other side and draw your next leg. This beetle's coming to life. This ladybug, actually. Great job. Now let's give it two things that come off of the top. What are those called? An antenna, right. Let's draw two antennas. coming off the front of the ladybug. Great work. Now, let's color it in. Color in all of your dots black. And usually we see ladybugs that are red sometimes dark brown, so you can get a red or a brown color out of your box. And color the top black as well. And then find your red. Let's color in the body of the ladybug.
Next, let's draw a firefly. Find another part of that paper or flip it over and let's practice drawing a firefly. We are going to draw the top part and we're going to draw the bottom part and its head. Good. And in this case, the wings are going to be out, so let's do one big curved shape in the middle. And two smaller wings on top. See how we just tuck it back behind a little bit? What else do we need? The antenna. Good, and the coolest thing about the firefly is how it can light up and glow, right? You were learning about that. It's a way for it to communicate. So let's do a nice glow of light. We've practiced drawing the ladybug and the firefly, and we've practiced drawing some of our organic shapes. This is the fun part. Take the work that you did in part one, the word insect, drawn in block letters, and we're going to draw some of our insects in and around this word. We're going to fill in the background, and we can use any organic shape that we want or any insect that we want. You can draw any insect that you have in your mind, but You've just practiced the firefly and the ladybug, so maybe you're going to use a lot of those two insects for your background. Let's think about drawing some ladybugs going up the letter I. So what we would do is we would start with our big circle, and then the head. So this is a miniature drawing of what we just practiced. And we know we've got six legs and two antennae, the line for the wings, and some characteristic dots for that ladybug. Let's make the ladybugs crawl all the way up this letter I. Now when you're working on the ladybug and you're making him miniature, you just want to remember your shapes. We've got a circle, the line in the middle, some dots, and the legs. And that is enough to make it look like a ladybug. Let's put some ladybugs on top. Circle. Which way is he walking? line for the wings and some dots. You can put insects anywhere on your wonderful word that you worked on in part one. The lettering and drawing the word insect. Nice, do you like it? Now what if we put some fireflies around the middle like they're flying away? So this reminds us what the firefly shape is going to look like. So what if we put a firefly up here? There's his head and his body. Good. And his wings. Antenna. And if you like to put the glow around the bottom of the firefly, you can do it like that. And let's make the fireflies flying far, far away. So three parts of the body, the wings, antenna, and the glow. One more, the three parts of the body, four wings, antenna, and the glow. 
you'll notice the more we draw, probably the more comfortable you get with your drawing of these insects. Good. Should we put some more ladybugs? Where would you like to put more ladybugs? How about below the word? How about right here? We can put a ladybug right in the middle, looking that way, because that's the head. And if you want this to go on, to draw, to remind yourself that the ladybug has antenna. How many legs? You should know that by now. And the wings, his wings are down, so we just draw the line. And the characteristic dots. One more nice big circle. Antenna, legs, wings are closed, and some good dots. Good work. And one more. If anybody didn't know the word insect before this, our creative drawing is helping somebody learn. They could look at the insects and they could say, I wonder if that word says insects because I see insects everywhere. Wonderful. What if we do some more fireflies this way, flying up and out of the picture? Okay, let's do some over here. How many parts of the body does the firefly have? Three. How many wings? Two sets of wings. Four. Antenna and the glow. Three parts of the body, two sets of wings, antenna, and the glow. One more. If anybody asks you how many parts of the body the firefly has, you know the answer now, right? Beautiful. Look at that. Okay, now let's add some organic shapes to this background. You can do as many insects as you want. You can put them everywhere. You could practice drawing the grasshopper. You could practice drawing the rhinoceros beetle with that curved head, the curved part that comes out of the front of his body. But we're going to do the rest of the background with organic shapes. Remember, they curve and they're what we see in nature. So let's do as many organic shapes as we want. See how these kind of look like leaves? And ladybugs like to be in the leaves. So it's a happy little ladybug right there. What if we do some big organic shapes on the bottom? They look like leaves and they're curling and curving around the page. And what if we do one cool organic shape where we use the inside of the S and it curves around kind of looks like a flower but it doesn't have to be what if we put one inside the C this is time for you as a designer to just choose what you want to draw and just have fun with it choosing what we want to draw and you can change your organic shapes by drawing your pencil nice and long, right, where you don't even pick up the pencil. This is a cool shape because we are not picking up the pencil, but look, we're going to connect it right where we started. Good job. What if we do some more leaf shapes in this area? And yours might look different than mine because you can choose whatever you want. Just want to show organic shapes in the background because that is different than our geometric shapes which we used to write our lettering. So we're being very creative and we're designing some creative lettering today. Nice organic shapes. 
And if you left the bottom empty like me, what shape is that? It's a big rectangle. It's a geometric shape. So what if we um, put some geometric shapes on the bottom? And this can show a nice difference with our organic shapes. We have learned that geometric shapes, we see them in math. We can measure them with a ruler. We see them, they're mechanical, we see them in machines. So put some nice geometric shapes along the bottom of your lettering. Wonderful. And if you have time, you can fill in all of the space that you see. We could put a nice organic shape in there. Another one in here. And anywhere you have space, you can do an organic shape. Make sure it's got nice curves. Wonderful. How about one last one right there? Okay. Now because these are organic shapes, we're going to spend some time coloring them in. And we see greens and blues in nature. So look in your box of colors and see if you can find greens and blues. And anywhere you have an organic shape colored in with some greens and blues. And you can pick different greens and blues along any color that you would like to use. If you would like to use your green yellow, it's fun color to see. Good, so just take some time enjoying coloring. Coloring is a good time to take deep breaths. It's a good time to stop and relax. Do you have shapes all over your page? And you can switch colors whenever you want. This is a big, big shape. As you can see, there's a lot you can do with creative lettering. You can spend as much time as you want coloring and you can color all of your shapes and you can also color the background behind the shapes if you want to so that the whole page is filled with cool color. That would be a really fun design. I would love to see what you come up with. All right, and then you can color the whole page. If we look at the insects, what color would signify that this is ladybug? Red, but this is kind of a pinkish red. Do I have another red in there? Look for a straight red, just red, because ladybugs are usually red or reddish brown. So this shows us, yeah, they're ladybugs. And then you come back with your black and find those dots and color those dots in. So I want you to color all of your ladybugs. And there's some more over there. And then color your 
Well, fireflies, that's the word. Sometimes they're a little bit lighter brown in the body. And the head is a little bit darker. Sometimes they even have a dot on their head. So color all your fireflies. And the wings. And just work as long as you would like. There is so much going on in this picture. I hope you have had a lot of fun working on your geometric shapes, your organic shapes, and your interesting insects. I'm gonna do the glow behind the insect. Good job, second grade, nice work. I can't wait to see your finished piece. All right, second grade, I'm so glad you joined me today in class all about interesting insects, how to draw organic shapes, and how to spark that creativity in ourselves as we practice our art. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you again soon, and as always, keep making art.